Hello, and welcome to another episode of... News from the Gelding. Okay, hello everyone. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. Um, if you're new to the, this channel, um, it's often book reviews, but um, every once in a while I talk about new paintings that I've uh, done and just other inconsequential, superfluous fucking crap news that pertains to my life. Uh, so you've got all of that to look forward to today. If you want to zip ahead to the new paintings, please do so. Timestamps down below. <laughs> what was that, Sir Percival? <laughs> <laughs> he's got a bit of tape over his mouth because lately he's been a right bastard. <laughs> um, okay, right, I'll take it off. That's fine. No filth. Never before have I ever been so disrespected. I have a mind to take you across my knee and give you a damn good thrashing. Yes, well, if you agree not to talk any more filth, you can keep the tape off. Hop yours, you tit. Yeah, oh, as usual, filth. Absolute filth. <laughs> Get on, you bloody dirty old man. Anyway, um, right, so... Um, Let's have a bit of tea first. So, it's the end of summer. Autumn is upon us. Um, it's my favourite uh, season of the year, so I'm quite happy about it. Got a jumper back on, which um, I absolutely love wearing jumpers. Um, the summer holidays this year were slightly more productive than last year, during which time I had uh, acute tonsillitis and did bugger all. This time I managed to do six paintings. I've shown you one or two in the uh, already in the past. Um, I've written the lion's share of a new short story, a science fiction one. And what else? Oh, I did a couple of gaming live streams with my sisters. So um, yeah, these ones here. Um, if you fancy uh, popping over to them next time, please do so. I'm hoping to get my brothers around for one soon, hopefully. I don't know. Uh, Kirk and Mitch, um, but they're often a bit more busy because of their uh, uh, families, uh, uh, children and whatnot. So we have to uh, plan ahead. But that will happen and we will relive the heady days where we were all playing games together, getting drunk and beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> no, we didn't really do that. Well, we did, but that was a long time ago. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, right. After all that, let's get down to a bit of slag news. OK, so, right, all I've got to for you today is evidence of the slug's presence. Now, that is a photograph of my carpet uh, in the studio, which is a bit of a mess anyway. Um, but that glistening... Um, puddle is not uh, what you may think it is. It's not human seed. It is um, a cavorting slug. We've had, um, they, they just love the studio now for some reason. I think it's because I'm leaving um, tissue on the floor with bits of um, oil paint on it and I, they might be eating it perhaps. I don't know because um, they're all around there where I chuck my dirty rags. Um, so what I'm going to do very soon now, I've been promising to do this for a while now, I'm going to set up a camera and do a time lapse and see what we can see. If we don't see any slugs, hopefully we'll see a ghost or two. Um, you never know. It's an old building. There could be a, um, a ghost or two. Uh, maybe a slug ghost. That would be a, <laughs> be a good one, wouldn't it? Okay, so what else? Um, so yeah, I did the last review I did was um, Stephen King's Joyland. That was nice. I'm reading yet another Stephen King uh, book. This is firmly entrenched in the horror uh, genre. So it's uh, it's called Desperation. So I'm going to be re uh, reviewing that maybe next week. Um, it's a very it's quite a big book. It's quite long. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll finish that for next time. Um, but I've, I'm, I'm enjoying it and not enjoying it, but uh, we'll talk about that next time. <clears throat> a little bit of waffle in this one. Um, okay, what else? Right, this is a new segment. What am I watching? Uh, so, um, recently we finished, I, think I may have already talked about this, but Ozark, we finally finished that, um, which is on Netflix. So it's, it's, a, it's kind of like... Um, 
Breaking Bad, but set in the Ozarks. Um, and it's about a, a, an accountant who who's working for um, a Mexican drug cartel laundering their money. And um, he's constantly having to stay one step ahead of them because they keep threatening to kill him and his family. Uh, very good, very far-fetched, but also very entertaining. So we were quite sad when that ended. So there's three series of that. Uh, get on it uh, soon. We're, we're watching a lot more stuff now because um, we used to watch uh, Neighbours regularly, the uh, Australian soap. Uh, but since that's bit the dust, we're just moving on to whatever else takes our fancy. Um, the other thing that we've been consuming, um, like two or three uh, episodes a day, is um, was it Making a Murderer? I think it's what it's called. It's on Netflix again. True Crime. It's about a man called Stephen Avery, who was wrongly committed of a, uh, I think it was a rape, it was a rape, um, and he served 18 years for it, um, but it wasn't him, and uh, DNA evidence came to play, and it, they found it was someone else, a prolific sex offender, so uh, that was great, he came out, but um, about a year later, he was convicted of a murder, so it's all about that, whether he did it or he didn't, whether the police were um, involved in uh, setting him up, very interesting, very interesting, we're on the second part of that now, I would give that a go if you're into cr true crime, Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's get to the paintings. That's what we're all about here. So, first one. So what I'm going to do is I'll pop some of these up. Some of them I've got physically here. Some of them have been bought or their commissions. So the first one is another commission. So this is from Tommy. So I've done one for him already. And um, to to maximise the postage over to America, um, I've, uh, I've done a second one for him. So I'm, again, I'm not going to show the whole thing. So this is just a part of it. Um, so it's um, another Japanese young lady. Uh, so this one had a um, like the uh, quite an interesting background, but the 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 figure itself was uh, monochrome. So I just, I just did it in black and white. Now, the way I do black and white, I don't use the black colour out of the tube. I make my own dark colour and various gradations from that. So a mixture of well, various things. Naples yellow, titanium white, a bit of phthalo blue, burnt umber. So there's quite a few different colours there to make something that actually looks black and white. Um, so I was quite pleased with that. It was a little bit of a challenge, especially the face. Um, so this is quite a large canvas, um, well, large-ish. Um, and that went well. It's all packaged up and it's ready to go. Tommy, if you're watching, I don't think you follow me on here, but it will be with you in about 10 days or so. But uh, Royal Mail over here, who is, um, that's our uh, main postal carrier in this country, well, one of many, but tradi the, the tr traditional, um, the you know, the Royal Mail anyway. Um, but there is industrial action happening now and then, so they are striking and it could delay. But it's all, it's all going to be tracked, so you'll get it. It'll all be fine. Okay, next one. So this one here. Right, so what I'll do is I'll... Um, I'll pop it up here properly. So this started out as... Um, an abstract uh, painting. So in uh, in the in the beginning, it was a kind of a red and black kind of squares thing. Um, I didn't really like it, so I thought well, I'm going to make this look luminous. So I I made it all. Um, I haven't got a photograph of the original, so I made it this kind of a luminous uh, green situation. And then I thought, right, something needs to go over the top of that. So I tilted it on its side and used it for a background. So this first bit here is the underpainting because it was so bright behind and so busy that I, I wanted to lock in the colors and then go over again. So, and this is the final one here. Now I'm calling this glitch girl because what happened was when I did this, the underpainting, I realized that the thick paint I used underneath was showing through the painting. So I thought, right, I'll get a scalpel and I'll just cut off all the edges of those uh, protuberances um, and then I'll paint it over a nice flat se uh, surface then. But when I scraped those bits off, I realized that it was quite an interesting effect. It had gone through the various layers that I had applied. So some of those red bits that you can see 
are the the original uh, abstract painting so for me it looked like um this this woman is um a kind of hologram and she's kind of glitching in and out of um existence um so this one took a very long time to paint just because i i never at any one point knew what i was doing <laughs> uh, so i never planned to do this hologram girl glitching in and out of existence but that's what it was what happened at the end um this one was bought by my father thanks dad there's another one he's uh one of my well, he's i think he's my main collector now he's got quite a few of my paintings uh, thanks very much dad um so yeah i haven't got that physically here because he's it's with him now nicely varnished and hopefully on the wall okay right so next one so the next um yeah next three i can show you in in physical form so let's go for this one here so i'm calling this one tentatively uh purple rain so it's um it's one of these portrait ones i do so again it's a japanese lady um and a kind of it were an abstract purpley background i'm gonna zoom in now so um originally um it was just the face i i worked on the face i usually do the face first and then i block in the hair and as my good friend dan said uh he said to me on a couple of occasions it looks good just as the face without putting the hair in. and i agree um but once i've got the outline of the hair i always want to knock the hair in so but i may in the future do some where it's just the face uh, showing through an abstract background so then this is the actual painting itself um this was relatively hard to do because again i'm painting directly onto an abstract background um so trying to get your values right when you've got such a bright uh, background is a little bit tricky and ensuring that the syrup, the paint that you're applying isn't too thin so it's showing through the background there's various things going on i was also using a, a new brush that i bought a, a while ago it cost me six pounds uh, for a, a, it's a liner brush um, and I haven't used it for ages because I've been worried to use something that costs so much <laughs> but it makes these really nice lines um, thin lines which I use for the highlights on the hair uh, it's very easy to use um, normally I find it quite hard to do fine lines with um, a shorter hair brush you need to be far more steady with your hand but with the uh, liner brush a lot of the I've got the brush here <coughs> we are look at this little fella i would do that thing with a this is the pro way of doing it but i haven't got my focus on so you won't be able to see it it's very thin very fine and so it's got some good flex on it so when you apply your pressure to it it just makes a really clean line even if you've got a wobbly hand so there we are hopefully that will last for a few more paintings yet before it starts fucking up because brushes do that after a while if you, even if you take really good care of them which i do i um I, I i put a lot of effort into caring for my brushes okay the next one is an abstract painting so again i'll show you the actual painting and then i'll show you some close-ups so this is um as you can see an attempt at a, a, a kind of strange 3d landscape with these very garish colors looks quite like some of the ones i've done in the past a little bit like um, graffiti i suppose but anyway i'll show you where this came from so again this is a development of an idea that i use um, a kind of an abstract background and then i use the forms that i see within that background to carve out a painting so that so yeah after carving out those initial shapes i then put in these lines keeping them on the same plane so that it it, it had some three dimensional um, quality to it i really enjoy it and really enjoyed that painting and there's some of the forms that have come through in that painting i'm going to develop into some other ones because i really like um strange geometric landscapes very pared down landscapes it reminds me of like old uh, computer games the old 3d games um and like tron things like that i just love those kinds of um deserted plains there's nothing there it's quite quite surreal anyway there's going to be more of those coming okay the last one i'm going to show you um this one here 
This is one that I'm, I haven't got any close-ups of this one. But this one is going to be, so it's a kind of a skull with machine stuff all over it. Now I'll show this when I finished it, maybe in a week or two, maybe two weeks. I'll do another one of these and show you the finished thing. This is going to be a skull here and a spine. I've drawn the spine, but I'm not going to use all of that, I don't think. Um, and I'm going to use this as the front cover for my upcoming science fiction short story collection. So there we are. Ooh. Almost tripped on my flute then. Ooh, right. I think that's about it for today. Um, I'm going to say goodbye. I'll be back with a book review soon. And in a couple of weeks, I'll do another one of these if I've got enough paintings to show you. Otherwise, have a nice week and I'll see you very soon. Uh, cheerio. Say goodbye, sir. He can't, he can't talk. Right, if I take that off your mouth, will you be um, pleasant and say goodbye to all our lovely viewers? I'll take that as a yes. This bitch, daddy's got a wet pussy. Never before have I ever been so disrespected. I have a mind to take you across my knee and give you a damn good thrashing. Up yours, you twat. Up yours, you tit. <coughs> uh, that's better. Daddy's got a wet pussy.